40 boxcom here, and Girl Math is TikTok's latest financial craze and is helping young people justify any kind of spending and makes anything below $5 basically free. <laughs> so, I had no clue what Girl Math was. I did not know that this was a thing, like, at all. Like, at all. But let's check this out. First, there was Lazy Girl Jobs, then Girl Dinner. Now, Girl Math is the newest girl term dividing the internet. But you may actually be participating in this trend every day without realizing it, even if you're not a girl. The term stems from a New Zealand morning radio show, Fletch, Vaughn, and Haley. The host created a girl mass segment to help female listeners justify pricey purchases, ranging from expensive dresses to Taylor Swift tickets. Now there's the tone of a woman who's dropped a lot of money, quit one of the hosts as the trio took a call in one clip to help a woman run the math on justifying a $699 hair dryer eventually making enough mental leaps to tell her she was actually coming out ahead by $14,301. It's not basically free. You're running a business here now. <laughs> what the hell? The trend has since exploded on TikTok, amassing over 53 million views worldwide. As TikTokers cemented the rules of girl math in real time, important tenants include any purchase under $5 is free, and drinks purchased through your preloaded Starbucks app are also free since that money had already left your account. Girl math may be a new term, but the concept has been well documented in cognitive psychology. The field calls it mental accounting, a mindset where $2 are not treated as equals, according to Dan Egan, Director of Behavioral Finance and Investing at Betterman. And although the name itself assigns a gender to this mental accounting, the viral videos have simply lifted the lid on a trend people of any age and gender frequently and unknowingly participate in. This has nothing to do with being a girl, per se, Aiken said via email, there's an in-group inclusiveness and in non gentlemanness to this videos, which makes it easier to be vulnerable and talk about mistakes, silly things we do. While that might provide some catharsis, leaning into the logic of girl math carries some major financial risk. Here's how. Well, I mean, here's the thing, right? Just in that previous thing, like, they justified a $699 hair dryer purchase and say like, oh, actually, you're actually going to be making like 14K. Like, what? So if I paid in cash, it's free. One of the central beliefs of girl math is that cash doesn't count. Girl math adherents post it, what, pose it that when you pay in cash, the purchase is free since your bank balance technically stays the same after. That's not how money works. Lord, it might take some mental gymnastics, but in these days of using cards for every purchase, it's easy to understand how cash feels different. In fact, if you're doing it right, paying for things in cash can be a great way to curb your spending. An old budgeting method known as cash stuffing, or the envelope system for Dave Ramsey fans, has recently seen a resurgence with the TikTok generation. This method allocates a specific amount of cash to physical envelopes design, uh, designated for different spending buckets, like groceries or entertainment, and whatever's in the envelope is the maximum amount available to the spender within a certain time period, two weeks. Once the cr cash runs out, that's it until the next spending period starts. So following a budget may be less fun than telling yourself your $12 Starbucks afternoon pick-me-up doesn't count, but it's a small price to pay for financial stability. Now, one way that you could technically use this girl math to basically to your advantage is similar to the cash stuffing thing, but like basically just just put it this way. Say that you budget yourself like every month that you can do $300 and spend like it on anything, like literally anything. So 
You take it out in cash, and you could literally spend it out on anything, but you budgeted for it. It's not the same thing as this whole, if you spend it in cash, it's just free. That's not the case. But, you like if you, like, basically give it a that money basically like a a designated place at the beginning of your paycheck or pay month or every month whatever it's a lot easier for you so for example let's say that after taxes you make like five hundred dollars per week right so let's say that you allocate fifty dollars per week to spend on anything right like you already budget 50 bucks per week that you could spend on anything. Well, by the next week, if it, you, if you didn't spend anything yet, you got 50 bucks plus the next 50 bucks, which is 100 bucks. So technically, you could spend that 100 bucks on anything, right? Because it's still within that category of spending money on anything, and you didn't spend anything the previous week. So technically, you got 100 bucks to basically spend on anything. So you could set it up in that way to where basically you like already lost the money in a way, but you basically already made a budget for it. You're basically already created like a sinking cash fund to be able to just spend your money however you want to spend it without really thinking too much about it. Like say you like you want to like every time you go out, it's 50 bucks. There's no specifics as to what you spend that money on, but every time you go out. So it could be the movies, it could be just getting drinks, it could be getting like, I don't know, eating like a nice restaurant or something. It might be taking someone out on a date. It's just going out. That's just the category. It's very broad. So that's an easier way to like set it up. Like The problem with like the whole girl math is that they're trying to justify bad spending by using cash and you're just going to get yourself in a sticky situation because you're actually going to be losing money over the long term. So if it's under $5, it's free. (laughs) With Gen Z feeling the crunch of everything from high rental prices to student loans these days, small $5 purchases may seem insignificant to them. It's very hard to kill yourself with a thousand paper cuts, and it's very hard to really get in trouble spending small amounts of money, he can says. Spending too much time deliberating or worrying about little purchases probably costs you more time and stress than money. But this girl math doesn't add up long term. If you spend every uh, spend five bucks every day for a month, you spend $150. Even according to girl math, that's not free. Over time, these small costs can erode your financial stability and make it hard to set aside enough for long-term savings. So, one of the reasons why this might be very common in like girl math category kind of stuff, right? Like towards girls specifically, is that from like the ages of I think like 18 to like 30, 35, you have a lot of ladies that go to Starbucks like every single day, like literally every single day. And they get these like big cups of like something, caramel, frappuccino, something, right? And that's going to be about the $5 range. So getting that every single day really adds up. And typically it's literally just that coffee, just that coffee. And it just adds up because the problem with like making like, and here's the thing, it doesn't even necessarily have to be like the whole coffee thing, but it's just like, say that you go out to eat for like lunch every single day. That's going to be like 10, 15 bucks every single day. That is going to be potentially like 300 bucks a month, 400 bucks a month. That really adds up. That is like a car insurance payment. That is a car payment. That is like a utility bill. Like it gets into like kind of sketchy territory if you keep doing this. That's the dangers of like the whole like if it's under $5, it's free because it's really not. Yeah, you don't really feel the pain at that moment, but you're definitely going to feel the pain when it comes to bill time or by the end of the month, you're like, oh my God, I got no money until my next paycheck. What am I going to do? Like That gets into a very sticky situation. So what I really recommend people is like, if you want to get something like every single day, budget for it, right? You might have to cut down on like your grocery payment so that you could get food or drinks 
throughout the day every day. Because if you want to go and do that, you got to really make room for it within your budget. Or you got to cut costs somewhere else. Maybe instead of going out all the time on the weekends, you allocate that money towards getting these treats throughout the day. Is this something you got to really think about? So it is this role specifically that has spurred the most pushback from both the personal finance community and the math community who viewed the trend as amplifying the stereotype that women are bad with money, something both communities have worked hard to fight against. The thing is, is it's not necessarily that women are bad with money, it's that a lot of women have no interest in money, so they're very like ignorant of like personal finance just because they just literally have zero interest in it. Like is is very rare to find a lady that is really into personal finance. It is very rare to find that. But typically they usually like are running a business or something like that. So personal finance experts would tell you there's no such thing as free money. The closest you can come to that is either through a 401k employer matching contributions or the magic of compound interest. And although there's some onus on you to create the conditions for that money to find you, some maps make it easy as passive as investing your spare change. I'll lose money if I don't buy this. So the philosophy behind this role has an unlikely champion, investing legend Warren Buffett. (laughs) It's all about opportunity cost. Not snapping up a stock when it's at a low can cost you money in the long run. The same principle can apply to sweet deals on groceries, clothes, or airfare. The issue is that this girl math rule often helps justify expensive purchases that aren't totally necessary. The Kiwi radio host famously used girl math to justify a listener's $330 dress purchase for the upcoming wedding season. The host argued that because she'll wear the dress to three different weddings, it's only really costs her $110 per wear. So it's free because that's the same price as when renting one dress for one wedding. The hell? Low per use cost. If I spend $1,000 and use it a thousand times, that's only $1 per use. It's suitable for making us feel better about big purchases, again says. But your credit card and your bank account don't let you pay for it $1 at a time. Just think about it this way. If you don't have the funds to pay off a big purchase right away, ask yourself how much it's going to cost you in interest before you can clear it from your credit card balance. If the total comes out to less than buying an item full price, then yes, you save money. If not, then it may be the case that the girl math isn't working in your favor and it could actually be subtracting from your future financial stability. Now, another way to kind of like turn this like in a different way to your benefit so that you could actually save more money and like make more money too is anytime you go and like are about to make like a big purchase, right? What you could do is basically just like take a step back and be like, okay, this item costs, let's say, like a hundred bucks. And then like let's say that you only make ten dollars per hour. That means that you are trading ten hours to be able to buy that product. Although technically, because you, that's like before taxes, it's really actually you're basically trading like twelve, thirteen, fourteen hours roughly to buy that one hundred dollar item. And when you factor it into like that kind of like context, you're like, woof, is that item really worth spending that amount of time for? Like, just think about it. So like, let's say that you wanted to buy a brand new pair of jeans. Those new pair of jeans cost like 50 bucks, right? So you want to trade five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours, roughly speaking, to be able to buy a pair of new jeans that you don't need? Does that make sense? Do you really want to trade your time for that? And like the reason why this can like work out like very well is because the majority of people are paid per hour. So if that's your case, it makes it a lot easier to figure out whether or not a purchase can be justified or not. And like, can you actually really handle that justification of spending that amount of time 
to buy that specific item. Now it gets into like kind of like weird scenarios if say that you're like a salesperson or like you're a salary individual, but mainly like a salesperson, right? So like, for example, let's say that you are a real estate agent or you are a someone who like owns their own business or something like that, like something that like the more free time that you have to be able to work on making money, like it like counteract it. So what I mean by that, let's say that within like if you had like an extra hour to your day in terms of work time, you could generate like another thousand dollars per day. If that's the case, then spending money to like let's say buy takeout would be justifiable because you're saving so much time, thus saving so much money because that time could have been spent to make big ticket sales or income bringing uh, opportunities, right? Which is not the case if you are a per hour employee, right? Because if you're a per hour employee, it's really hard to justify spending like an hour or two hours of your time for just one meal. Like that really eats up into your whole finances. But if you can make $500 a day, $1,000 a day by just getting a sale, like one sale can like bring in like a 500 bucks or like a thousand bucks, then it justifies you spending less time trying to make your own food versus just buying it, you know? Let's see. Let's check out some of these comments. They're probably going to be insane. I wasn't great with money in my 20s, but I never once deluded myself into thinking I wasn't spending money. This is absurd. <laughs> it's like the big, uh, the exact opposite of the big movement five to ten years ago where we stopped frequent small purchases, i.e. making your own coffee over buying Starbucks. I think they are misusing the underlying concept. My example is I bought a $70 hair clipper ten years ago and haven't paid for a haircut since. That's how you actually use the concept to your advantage. Girl math, $80 shoes on sale for $60, you're saving $20. Everyone else, you're spending $60 when you could be saving $60. <laughs> they could put three $5 purchases per day towards their student loan payments and make their payments on time every month. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. My girl math is every time I have singles, I put them in a box at home and save them. I also do this with $5 bills. It's small amounts, but can add up quicker than you think. I also prefer to use cash over my debit card. Makes helps me spend less, but I never think it's free because I'm using cash and it costs less than $5. Sorry, but that is kind of thinking is back as... This is why people spend more with carded debit cards than with cash, because there is no physical, tangible money leaving most people don't account for it. Let's see. If your children follow... This mythology, you fail them miserably. No woman in the history of forever has worn the same dress to three weddings. Lord. I see why a lot of people are broke. Yeah. The level of ignorance to justify not taking accountability for oneself is amazing. See, that's the biggest thing. Like, this whole thing is like. This whole girl math thing is really just a way to try to justify not having to feel accountable or feel bad about spending money horribly, right? Like, it's a pretty sad situation because I feel really bad for a lot of girls that end up going down this path because they could literally just be like screwing their future, like financially speaking, because they just don't want to feel bad about their spending. When, like, if they just were like, hey, maybe I shouldn't be spending every day at Starbucks, 
like maybe I shouldn't be, you know, spending that like coffee, a meal at Starbucks or like bagel or whatever.